Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Hot weather, little rain, dry forest. All this put together adds up to terrible danger. Forest fire, scavenger of forests, a roaring hungry monster consuming everything in its path. Bill has sounded the alert. The forest around Knotty Pine is tinder dry. All fire towers are carefully watching for the slightest wisp of smoke to curl up from the millions of acres of treetops. All eyes are watching. Watching by day and by night. They're watching for fire. Listen to the story of The Fire Bug. Stumpy, have you seen our copy of the Rangers magazine around here? Nope. There ain't no comics in it, no house, honey. <laughs> I'll give you comics. Gray Wolf, have you seen it? Mm, I not see it, Bill. There are plenty of good article in there on new diseases of trees. Yeah, that's why I want to find it. I wonder where it went. I'll answer it, fellas. Bill Jefferson speaking. What's that? Yes. Yes, we're on our way. Goodbye. Fire. Right. Let's go, boys. Where fire, Bill? South Forks. It ain't along the Red Valley freight tracks again, is it? Yeah, that's where it is. Stumpy, you're closest to the driver's seat. Hop in. Yep. Now let her roll. There you go. Step on it, Stumpy. Maybe we can nip this one in the bud. Five minutes and woof. Ah, getting tired putting fire out along tracks. I am too, Grey Wolf. This is the fifth fire in three weeks. Well, Randolph Thompson's got to do something about those spark throwing locomotives of his. Yeah. We've got to get proof that his engines are throwing the sparks. Right. How do you plan to get proof, Bill? I'll tell you how, Grey Wolf. You and I are going to camp out here and watch the iron firebugs throw sparks with our own eyes. As good way as any, Bill. All right, let's pick up our gear and go back to town. Right. Then Grey Wolf and I will get the horses and come back. I'm telling you, Randolph, we've got to do something about the stacks on our engines. They're throwing sparks like a torch. Listen to me, Scotty. I'm not spending one red cent on those steam locos. In a couple of months, we'll have our diesel engines, and then we can junk the iron horses. Yeah, but the rangers are going to get pretty sore when they find out how the fires are starting. Oh, that's all I've heard since the first fire. Rangers, rangers, look out for the rangers. I'm getting sick of hearing about them. They're federal officers, boss. You stick your neck out far enough, and the rangers will wrap a court order around it. Is that so? Let them try it. I'll run my freight trains when I want to and how I want to. Your job is to see that my trains stay on schedule. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. This easiest job I have for a long time, Bill. <laughs> I'll agree with that, Grey Wolf. 
And we'll stay camped here until one of Thompson's spark-throwing locomotives comes spouting along. How you plan to stop these fires? I'll ask Randolph Thompson to put spark arresters on his steam locomotives. Mm, I understand him plenty hard man to talk with. Yeah, I've heard that too, Grey Wolf. I know Thompson by sight only. I know he took over the Red Valley freight line from bankruptcy and made a going business of it. So he's plenty good. Sometimes these self-made men are hard to handle because they've had to work so hard to get where they are. And here comes the afternoon freight now. Maybe we hide back off right away. No, Grey Wolf, we'll stay right here. This right away is leased on government property. Look, Bill, engine throw plenty spark. Wow, I'll say. That's what I was hoping to see, Grey Wolf. That's our firebox. Back here again, Scotty. What is it now? I've got hot news for you, boss. I suppose you saw some rangers in your sleep last night. No, but the engineer on the three o'clock southbound saw them. What? Where? Along the right of way. You sure? Sure as I'm a foot high. Not only that, but the conductor watched them from the caboose. So? Then they followed them on horseback. They know what's causing the fires now, Randolph. All right, so they know. Let them make the first move. What? You heard what I said. Let them make the first move. Well, what you do about this is your business. But I know one thing for sure. What's that? If Bill Jefferson comes to see you, you'll know you've tangled with somebody. Yeah? Yeah, and take a tip from me. Don't rub his fur the wrong way. This feller Thompson's got a lot of equipment in his freight yard. And no wonder. He does quite a freight business, Stumpy. His line moves a terrific volume of freight, both north and south. On his north runs, he has to use double headers to get over the mountains. Bill, I uh, checked up on his schedule. He runs from six to eight trains in 24 hours, both ways. Oh, that'd make plenty tight schedule for one track. Yeah, his engineers have to push the throttle pretty hard. That's why the old locomotives throw so many sparks. Well, this looks like the general office building right here. That's what the sign says, if you can read, Sonny. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if it was alive, I guess it'd bite me, huh? (laughs) Hey, what's the plan of attack, Bill? Well, Stumpy, you and Ralph find out how many old steam locomotives he's got. Those are the ones that throw so many sparks. The newer steam jobs don't do that. The Grey Wolf and I will go see Thompson. We'll meet you back here at the car. Okay, Bill. Come on, Stumpy. Let's go count iron horses. Look out! One of them don't rear up and kick your teeth out! Uh, Stumpy, he sees something funny in everything. <laughs> Maybe we should have taken him into the lion's den with us. Now let's go pay an official visit on Randolph Thompson. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It isn't every railroad man who has a visit from the forest rangers. Uh, We're not here on a social call, Mr. Thompson. We're asking your cooperation in preventing a disastrous forest fire. I'll be glad to help as much as I can. Thank you. Now I'll get straight to the point. We've had five fires in the last three weeks along your right-of-way. It runs through the giant pines. Yeah, and... uh... Did you put them out? Only quick action saved whole forest from burning down. That would have been most uh, unfortunate to lose the giant pines. How does this affect me? This affects you directly, Mr. Thompson. Since you own the firebugs... What do you mean, I own the firebugs? You'd better be careful who you accuse, Bill Jefferson. I am being careful, very careful. That's why Grey Wolf and I camped along the right-of-way after the fire... 
to get absolute proof. You can't tell my right away without permission. That's private property, in case you don't know it. It's private property leased from Uncle Sam, in case you've forgotten. You already forget? You and Colonel Anders signed papers that gave you permission to build railroad through giant pines. I built my road according to specifications. I don't know how you can accuse me of owning firebugs. Maybe you'd uh, care to explain. The firebugs we're talking about are the ancient steam locomotives you're using on the southbound line. They throw sparks like a welder's torch. Those ancient locos have always thrown sparks. How come they're so uh, suddenly dangerous? Simple. The forests have become tinder dry because of the heat and drought. Isn't that my fault? No, but it's everybody's job to be careful when so forest very dry. I suppose you want me to stop my freight trains until we get some rain. Thompson, all we're asking is your cooperation until we get rain. These evasive tactics only convince me that you know exactly what we're talking about. Isn't that so? Well, We know I... engineer on train see us standing alongside track. He must tell you by now. All right, what do you want me to do? I want you to put spark arresters on those old clunkers. Spark arresters? You want me to spend a lot of time and money putting spark arresters on some old locomotives that will be junked as soon as we get our diesels? Thompson, surely you're not comparing the cost of installing spark arrestor equipment with the value of the Giant Pine National Park. If you are, you're not the businessman I thought you were. Now, look here, Jefferson. I don't intend to put money on those old locomotives. Why can't you put your rangers on guard along the track until the dry spell ends? That's impossible. One fire needs all the men I have available. The rest of the men are busy watching the other forts. Well, gentlemen, I, I'll think it over. That's the most I can promise you. I want something more than a promise to think it over, Thompson. I want action. If your firebugs kindle another forest fire, I won't be so pleasant to deal with. That's a warning. I said I'd think it over, and that's the most I'll promise. Good day, gentlemen. Your visit with Randolph Thompson didn't bring much in the way of results, huh, Bill? No, Ralph. He was polite in a cold sort of way, but definitely uncooperative. Uh, he in for a big fall, maybe sooner than he thinks he come down from high horse. It seems to me we ought to teach that ornery critter a lesson. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, Stumpy. What do you mean, Bill? I'm going to ask for a court order from Judge Deems. If the judge comes through as I think he will... Thompson won't be able to move a single train south until it's equipped with a spark arrestor. Here's your court order, Bill. All signed and sealed. Thanks, Judge Deems. I appreciate your cooperation. It's a matter of conscience with me. Randolph Thompson ought to be ashamed of himself for disregarding the safety of our national forest. Uh, what recourse do I have if he ignores this court order, Your Honor? Well, we've got a big jail here in Naughty Pine, Bill. What I mean, Judge, is... Is this court order binding on his employees as well as the owner? That's right, Bill. The court order reads that during the dry spell... Not one train is to move south unless it has a spark arrestor on its stack. Any person or persons who break the order may be arrested on the spot. Thanks, Judge. I won't serve this unless I have to. But I've made up my mind that Randolph Thompson isn't going to burn down the giant pines. Here's the situation. Until we get this thing straightened out, you'll have to patrol the railroad track constantly. That's the only way a disaster can be avoided. We'll keep our eyes open, Bill. Yeah, we do. Now, I realize you're not Superman, of course. So I've alerted Towers 3, 4, and 5 to keep a special watch, too. If a fire starts, send for help at once. 
And we'll take care of things, Sonny. There ain't no fire going to eat up the giant pines if we can help it. That's good, old-timer. Now you fellas better get going. It's almost time for the early morning southbound to take off. I'm going to have a talk with Thompson again. Okay, Bill. Get him up, King. Hey, Come on, get him up. Tilly. Scotty, I'm depending on you to take care of things while I'm gone. I'll be back this evening on this freight. I'll keep an eye on the whole operation, Randolph. Maybe you're convinced that Bill Jefferson means what he says, huh? (laughs) Why do you think I'm riding this caboose on the south run? Because you're afraid of Bill. (laughs) Don't be ridiculous, Scotty. But uh, I think he may have gone after a court order, so uh, I'm leaving. He can't serve it on me if I'm not here. That won't stop him. He'll serve it on you. Don't worry about that. Maybe so, but uh, this shipment of perishables and machinery has to go through, and uh, I'm going with it to make sure it does. Boss, you'd better get going pronto, because here comes a ranger car down the road now. Thanks for telling me. Here's the engineer's signal, and uh, I'm on my way. (laughs) Give the ranger my regards, will you, Scotty? Bye, boss! You just missed him, Bill. He's in the caboose of the morning southbound. He is, huh? Well, that's the last train he's going to move south. What do you mean? This is a court order, Scotty. Judge Deem says it's binding on all employees of the Red Valley Line as well as the owner. But you have to serve it in person, don't you? No, I don't. Not the way it's worded. I'll leave the order with you, Scotty. I'll let Randolph get away with the train he's running through now, but no more, you understand? Bill, believe me, there won't be another drive wheel turn until this whole thing is settled. Good, Scotty. And I wish your boss had the same cooperative spirit. Now, when will he be back? Oh, probably around midnight. Why? I want to see him. Storm. Oh, big boy. Oh, well, I guess the court order did the trick, Bill. Thompson hasn't let another train leave the yard since this morning. Uh, that's good news, Ralph. I didn't like to take such drastic action, but the man wouldn't listen to reason. If he ain't gonna run no more firebug trains, we might as well go home. Yeah, that's why he came out here. Let's call it a day and head for town. Uh, that's plenty of good idea. It's plenty hot and muggy out here. All right, engineer, let's get rolling back to Naughty Pine. Wouldn't advise it, Mr. Thompson. Don't like the looks of the crack in that left main piston rod. Oh? Won't it hold? Well, possibly. Hard to tell. I'd say no. We'll chance it anyway. Just reduce your speed going back. But, sir, it's I said get the train underway, do you hear me? That's an order. Okay, you're the boss. Give me the high sign when they get in the cab, will you? You bet.
Scotty. What's the matter? I'm glad I ran into you. I was on my way over to your office. Yeah? Why are you so excited? I couldn't get a hold of Randolph at the other end of the South Run. What do we do now? Oh, just wait until he returns. That's all you can do. Do you think he'll bring the freight back here or return the other way? You said it was bringing the freight back. Okay. You'll just have to wait and be ready in case of trouble. Sit still, fellas. I'll get it. Okay, Bill. Ranger headquarters, Bill speaking. Bill, this is Tom. I'm reporting a fire starting along the Red Valley tracks. Along the Red Valley tracks? Three miles below the pass. Thompson ran another train back from the south, huh? Did you notice it? Couldn't tell, Bill. The trees are too high and it's getting dark. Okay, Tom. We're on our way. Um, again? Yeah. We've got a fire to fight. Let's roll, boys. We'll take care of Thompson later. This time, fire get good start. Get on both sides of track. Ralph, call for bulldozers and men. I'm not taking a chance on this getting away from us. Run away, Bill. It's a treetop fire. Our best attack is to knock down the burning trees onto the railroad tracks. Let's get dynamite in the safety cases and stuff it under those trees. Right away, Sonny! Uh, I give you hands, Dumpy. Yes. Treetop fire, that's right. As soon as you can, that's it. That's right, bulldozers. I got the dynamite all set, Bill. Fine, Stumpy. Ralph, set up flares on the tracks. Grey Wolf, let's get after those big trees and blow them down. Uh, I'm ready to go. We get going. Good thing there's not much wind. Fight the fuses, fellas. Let's get out of here. Okay. Come on, Stumpy! Light it! Get going! Let's go! Move faster, Sonny! I'm stepping on your heels! Dynamite blow any time now! Come on! Behind this big tree, fellas! Good job, fellas. It's a good thing we can use the railroad right away as a fire lane. Yep! Them trees fell right across the railroad tracks. And now Ralph's got the flares up now. Hey, here comes Ralph like he's got a hot foot. Bill, Bill, look what's coming up the track. Great Scott, it's one of Thompson's big locomotives and pulling flat cars loaded with men. Yeah, here comes the fella. And it isn't Thompson. No, that's Scotty. Well, I got here as quickly as I could. I brought all the men I could get my hands on, including the yard crew. Oh, that's fine, Scotty. We'll need them. Grey Wolf, Stumpy, Ralph, divide the men and get after that fire. More help is on the way. Right, I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, sure. Well, Bill, I'm terribly sorry about this. I knew Randolph would get into trouble by not doing what he should. What do you mean, Scotty? His train standing on the sideway at the ten-mile grade. Yeah? He and the boys were looking at the drive wheels on the engine. Uh-huh. Something's wrong with the old clunker, but I didn't take time to find out. Well, now we've got real proof on Randolph. That's why I kept going. I'm trying to offset some of the damage he's done. How'd you know there was a fire? I could see it from the dispatcher's tower. Well, I'd better general this fire. Come on, Scotty. We'll get to work. We've got to save the giant pines. Place your tired crew. Pass the word to Grey Wolf. Okay, Bill. Bill, look, 
The yeah. cautious train is backing down on us, out of control. Great Here I am, my train. The caboose on his train will smash into the flat cars. Get the men back from the tracks. Pass the road. The trains are going to crash. Pass the road. Get back from the tracks. Get back from the tracks. Yeah, just in time, Stumpy. Here comes the freight, and she's got a smash. Bill, the boss must be in the caboose. Then let's get him out. How's Thompson feeling now, Bill? Pretty good, Ralph. Me and the crew jumped from the caboose just before the trains crashed. Good. He got a nasty crack on the head, but the doc says he'll be okay. Well, I'm glad for that. There's been enough damage done. Look, he's waking up. What happened, Randolph? You able to tell us? Yeah. The piston rod broke, climbing the ten-mile grade. The rod damaged the air brakes, but we managed to back down the hill onto the siding and hold the train with hand brakes, but the hand brakes gave out. And then I decided to roll back down the valley and let the train stop by itself. But didn't you think about the fire? I'm afraid I didn't do much thinking. I didn't expect the tracks to be blocked. Oh, what a mess. Did you get the fire out? Yes, the fire's out, Randolph. Uh, Scotty, have you got the piece of paper I gave you? Sure, right here in my jumper pocket. What piece of paper is that, Scotty? The court order Bill served. Oh. Well, Bill... Bill, go ahead and serve it. I, I deserve it and more. Randolph, I'm going to tell Judge Deems I didn't need it. I think the Lord sort of allowed circumstances to serve their own court order on you. Yes, that that bump on the head knocked some cooperative spirit into me. And I appreciate your spirit, Bill. Thanks. Believe me, I'll I'll do all I can to make restitution. Yippee! The giant pines is safe from them there firebugs! Well, Bill and the boys, with the Lord's help, finally got Randolph into a cooperative mood, even though it took a bump on the head. Some folks do have to learn the hard way, don't they? We'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! This is Stumpy Jenkins, Ranger Bill's old sidekick, as I guess you all know. Just adding a little extra word of thanks for getting yourself in on the program today. Always glad to have you along. And I hope you invite your friends, too, for we sure got lots of adventures to tell you about. And we don't want you to miss any of them. So you make sure to be there by your radio every week. Don't lose out on our next story.